Hi everybody, back again with another couple of videos. This is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be uh, Toxic City Wall, which is an expansion for Zombie Side, and part two will be Prison Outbreak, which is also an expansion, but it's a game that you can play uh, on its own as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's in the boxes, uh, go over a couple of the new rules that apply to each um, expansion show you the figures, things like that, some of the cards um, and I will post both of these videos on both of my YouTube channels and then what I will do is when the figures have been painted I will do a playthrough but I will only post the playthrough video on the Darren Baker channel so if you're watching the Lycan of the Underworld channel right now then keep checking onto the Darren Baker channel, I'll put a link below to see uh, a gameplay video when I do one and if you're on the Darren Baker channel well just stay tuned and I'll put a link below to my liking of the Underworld channel if you want to check out that one. Anyway Toxic City Mall. Um, this can be played with the original game and with Prison Outbreak. It cannot be played on its own you have to have one of one of those games to play it. Um, I was a Kickstarter backer for this, so all the extras that come with it I will be getting. Um, I'm waiting for some to arrive, some new uh, figures to arrive, and in April some more stuff will be arriving. But I'll do videos on all that when they arrive. So, first things first, comes with four double-sided boards. Just add these to the game boards for the other games. Um, the difference with these are you've got shopping mall and you've got the walkways that go through the shopping malls. You can drive cars down these walkways. Um, as with the previous game, you treat these walkways the same as you do um, roads so you can actually see zombies all the way along if your line of sight isn't blocked but with the rooms again you can only see zombies in the first room you can't see them in the second room if you're standing out here so I'll just show you the artwork for each one that's the only um, real difference between these see this way this one here it's got a roadway two shops and an alleyway so you'll be able to see all the way down there Here's the next one. Very gory, but um, very nice artwork. I'd love to see if somebody's actually uh, made an actual 3D board game of this. I'm sure there's someone out there who's probably working on it. Now this tile here is the car park. So you can see everything in there. Uh, I'm not sure on the rules for shooting diagonally. I don't think you can shoot diagonally though. You still have to be directly in line with a zombie to shoot them. But if you're in this room, obviously you'll be able to shoot all over the place. So that would be quite a bit of a good sort of killing fields. And the final board. Okay, moving on, here's some of the counters that you use, you've got different coloured spawning zones, you've got small doorways for them all, and you've got a large doorway. If this doorway is open, the cars can drive through, they can't drive into the shops, but they can drive around them all, on the alleyway, the gangways and things like that, and on the opposite side is the standard uh, spawning zones and the open doors. You've got open doors on that side, closed doors on that side. Also you have two sheets of this. You've got rubble, got a large rubble, too small. There's another one there. This um, blocks movement. You can't walk through it or over it you have to go around so that's a uh, different dynamic to the game you have to use different tactics 
here you've got your skill pointers. The green circle there over on the right is for the person who's got the rotten ability. Um, I think you just put it on the character to on the board to show that he's got it. Also you can build barricades. This side you've got um, a barricade in progress of being built and on the other side is a barricade that's already been completed. It takes a survivor all three actions to start building and another three actions to finish but you don't have to start and finish it with the same character so you can go up with one survivor start building it another survivor comes along and finishes it and you can still shoot over them and see through them but you cannot walk through them the only way you can walk through them is if you break them down and that will take another three actions to actually break it down um, so that's a sort of a dynamic, different dynamic as well to the game. You can block zombies ways off for getting to you, which slows them down a hell of a lot. Got some more doorways here, open and closed. Now on the other side, the rubble uh, looks like it's on fire. I think it's just something a little bit different. So you've got two of those. Here is your rule book. In this book you have the ten missions that they set out for you. The first few missions are Toxic City Mall and the original Zombicide game. And then the final few missions are Toxic City Mall used with Prison Outbreak. But of course you can make up your own. Nice artwork inside the book. Shows you the different characters. comes with standard dice, um, being one of the Kickstarter um, backers for this game, um, I have got some different coloured dice on the way. You also get your sliders, but these are different from the original game. The original game is just like an arrow, but this time, if it will focus, it's a skull. And these do slide across the character cards a lot easier than the others. They're not as tight so you don't get the cards flying all over the place. Talking of cards, you get loads of extra wound cards because in this game the Zombivores are introduced into the zombie side world and they take five hits to kill them so you need the extra wound cards for that. You've also got your Toxic Zombie spawning cards because the zombies in Toxic City Mall are all toxic. They just spawn as normal, there's no extra active activation cards and there's no spawning from um, manhole covers as well. So you don't get that, it's just normal spawning. And I'll talk about the um, Toxic Zombies when I show you the figures. And you also get loads of extra equipment cards. Now I've just taken out all the, all the new ones here. Here's a, a laser pointer which is basically you add that to your weapons to give you better dice rolls. Now the cards with the blood splatter across the top you've got like super red weapons. Now when you get to red level on your hero card you start again from zero but you can get to use these and these cards these weapons are much more powerful than normal weapons or if you've got one of these in your backpack and you're not on the red level you can trade it in and get five experience points if you wish to do that but as you can see from the bottom you get a lot more dice you get a lower score to actually hit and they can actually hit um, more powerful zombies. Here is spare change. This is like um, bullets. If you've seen the Resident Evil movies, um, Alice actually put these inside her shotgun and shot them. And that's what they've done here. So you get more damage if you use that. Here's Pa's gun. Now this is a gun that you hide in the Pimpmobile. 
This is the extra pimp mobile weapon. You had Mars shotgun in the original, you've now got Pars gun. You do get some pans, you can't do without your pans. Hollow point rounds, which are obviously more powerful bullets and add more to your damage or your dice roll. Good old flamethrower. Obviously, um, it could hit virtually anything. Kills everything, I suppose it's like a Molotov cocktail. It's another one of the super red weapons, Jack and Jill. Just more powerful sort of shotguns, as it were. Here's a gas mask, which means you're immune to toxic spray, and I'll talk about that in a minute when I get onto the zombies. Ned's atomic flashlight, which is essentially a lightsaber, which is a, a super red weapon, or ultra red. Again, this is the, the better version of the chainsaw, which can only be used when you hit the red. Another special red weapon, the 911 special uh, assault rifle. And here is a normal assault rifle, which is a, an extra weapon for the game. Cookies, obviously certain scenarios might ask you to find some cookies. You've got a Magnum pistol, very powerful. It's only one dice, but it can still take out a fatty. And you have Doug's Dream, which is a souped up version of the um, submachine guns, but it can only be used when you hit the red. So that's just some of the cards. Well, that is all the new cards. Also, here's your character cards. Now, what they've done this time is they've given you the original survivors again, but instead of it being blank on the back, you have the Zombivores. And I'll talk about those in a little while. So there's Ned with his own Bible. Wonder and hers. Doug and his. Phil. Josh, one of my favourite characters that I use. And finally. Amy. So not only do you get the Zombival figures, you also get four new survivors. So here we have Nima, and they do have different skills to start off with from what the others are. There's a Zombival. Here's Elsa, cool looking character. Raoul. I haven't actually played this yet. Um, I won't play it until I've got my figures painted. Here's Derek. So that's the new survivors. And these are all the figures that you get in the game. Now I'd advise you to go out and buy a second set of these toxic zombies because you're going to need them. So we'll do the zombies first. You've got four of these toxic fatties. Now the sculpts on these are very nice. Uh, some people are moaning about them. But I think they're a big improvement on the original, although the original ones were very good. Now with toxic zombies, when you kill them, they spray out toxic toxins. So if you're in the same zone when you kill a zombie, it will spray out toxic waste onto you and inflict one wound. So the best way to kill toxic zombies really are from long distance, unless you've got a character that has an ability to dodge toxic spray. <clears throat> so say so you get four fatties. They still spawn with two walkers as well. You get, I think it's 16 walkers. There's uh, four different sculpts for the walkers. It's a female walker. Very difficult to sort of see what they look like. You'll be able to see a lot better when I get them painted. Here's another one of the female walkers. 
I'm actually getting them painted uh, within the next few days. Here's the third type of walker. And finally the fourth walker. Shows their shambling uh, sort of look to them a lot better, these sculpts. And you get eight runners, two different sculpts for these. And here's the second type. And also your Toxic Abomination. Now this guy is different from the original Abomination. When he finishes his go, if there are any zombies in the same zone as him, he turns them into Toxic Zombies. The only ones he cannot turn into Toxic Zombies are the Berserker Zombies, which are in Prison Outbreak. But normal zombies, he can turn them into Toxic Zombies. Unless, of course, you haven't got enough toxic zombies, in which case he won't, make, won't be able to do it. So, characters. Um, I say you get the Zombivores for the original game. Here's Josh. Again, very difficult to pick out the detail because of the colour of the plastic. But as I said, when they're painted, they'll be much, much better. Um, this is Doug. Ned. Here we have Phil. We'll get these as on Bivores. Here's Wanda. This is a better sculpt than the original Wanda. And Amy. Another character I like using. Let's try and get it to focus. Here you go. Now Zombivores, when your main character dies, you can regenerate as a Zombivore. Zombivores are a lot more powerful because instead of taking just two hits, they can take five hits before they die, and you will need them in this game. So we'll just take a look at the newer figures. Uh, this one here, I believe, is Elsa. That one's going to look really cool when she's painted. And here's a Zombivore. the katana this is Raoul I believe no it's uh, Derek sorry this is Derek so I was not playing the game I'm not sh haven't learned the names yet and his on Bible now that's his that's his normal one, the other one was his Zombival. This is Raoul. He'll look really cool when he's painted. And his Zombival. And finally, uh, Nisa. This is her normal figure. And hers on Bible. I'll give you a better look at these when they're painted. And also, with this set, you get the first player counter. Before it was just a, a 
the plain old cardboard counter. This time you get an actual 3D miniature, which is a skull, which I probably won't bother painting. So there you go. It's just a sort of a, well, it's not a quick look round. It's a 20-minute video, but um, that's what's in this box. And in the prison outbreak box is even more. And I will post a video on that very soon as well. So until next, next my next video, as always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.